Joining me now is Claudia Rosette, who was editorial page editor of the Asian Wall Street Journal during the Tiananmen massacre in 1989. She was there, folks. She is now foreign policy fellow at the Independent Women's Forum. Claudia, great to see you. Thank you for being here. First of all, what do you make of Pelosi's trip? It's very good that she went. Uh, unfortunately, she's making promises to Taiwan, where on at home she spent years undermining America's ability to deliver them. You know, it's great to say we have, we stand squarely behind and with Taiwan. That's very good. But you don't go back to your uh, custom of bankrupt, spending America into bankruptcy, ignoring our open border, et cetera. Well, she she, her, her, she does have a long-time interest in, in Taiwan and, and in fighting the repression of the Communist Party in China. She was there uh, in 91, shortly after Tiananmen. Now, I mentioned you were actually in Tiananmen Square when the, the massacre took place there. But here she is in 1991 unfurling a banner. They were uh, hustled off by, by Chinese military there, as you can see in this, in this video from the time. Um, do you think that that Pelosi's concerns are sincere, or does everything going back to 91 just uh, scream politics to you? Claudia, can you hear us? Yeah. Claudia, are you there? Okay. I, folks, I, I think we no, lost... No, I did. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm go right ahead, here. Claudia. Yeah. Yes, no, they scream you. politics. I'm, I'm very sorry to say this, but I... I Nancy Pelosi has not convinced me that she is a global champion of freedom. She'd have to be doing a lot more at home in that regard. I think this is political. It has its useful side. Sometimes people do good things for kind of not quite the right reasons. But I'm glad she went to Taiwan. I hope a lot more American officials go. I wish they'd invite our allies. I wish she had invited high-ranking officials from our allies, from Japan, from Australia, from the UK, to simultaneously go with her, sort of the way Vladimir Putin and Erdogan of Turkey right. washed up in Tehran at the same time. But uh, the pro bigger problem, David, is this is a rising, uh, think of it as sort of a conglomerate of evil, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea. There's a lot going on right now that's very threatening. And it's great that Nancy Pelosi defied China. But I actually don't think that these exercises, I wouldn't blame them on Pelosi. Mm -hmm. I think China, I think Xi Jinping in China has a timetable. There are a lot of reasons to think that, including what he just did in Hong Kong. And he'll seize on the pretext, but if there isn't one, he'll manufacture one. And the bigger thing is, will America really stand up to him? Now, is there anything behind the promises? The, the, we do have a certain amount of arsenal, not just military arsenal, but we also have economic arsenal. China's been hit hard uh, by the worldwide yeah. recession. They, they still have this, this dumb, I think it's a dumb zero COVID policy, which is causing yep. lockdowns. <laughs> of course, sometimes they use that politically to go after enemies within their own country. I understand that. But the bottom line is we could use economic sanctions against them. Now would be a time when it would really hurt, no? Yes, now would be a time to do everything we can. At the moment, China's having real internal problems. They're having bank runs they can't really control very well. Uh, Xi Jinping's policy of zero COVID is horrible. People are miserable. They hate it. Uh, that's, a, that's something the U.S. should actually try to capitalize on. What we need also is a White House that will stand up to this instead of these sort of appeasement remarks that keep coming out where... Kirby is insisting that uh, we have not changed our policy. China doesn't need to worry. Actually, we should be saying things that have China very worried. Yes. Because yes. to a point right now, Xi Jinping is still pushing wherever he can. It's part bluff, part seeing where he can go. And we need to stand up to him. Well, David, I well, wish... Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that the, the Taiwanese are, are going to do the best that they can to stand up if there's an actual invasion. But at the same time, because of China's economic problems and because of the richness of Taiwan, Taiwan has about $54 billion companies in there. And of course, the main, the gem of all of their companies is, is their chip industry, which is one of the world's best. I mean, these are just some of those companies. The Chinese government is, is not stupid in terms of just going through and, and destroying uh, Taiwan the way that Russia's been destroying Ukraine. If they have a war of attrition, they're going to lose all of these gems. How, how do you think she wants to go about taking over that island? 
I think he'd want to minimize what they lose. But I, I think if you look at what he did in Hong Kong, if you look at how he's running China itself, uh, I think he's willing to sacrifice a very great deal in order to get the territory he wants, consolidate the control he wants. This is a very ambitious man, now closing on 70 years old. And the original timetable, we sort of thought, because China said this, he said this, was 2049, the 100th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic, Communist China. It, I, that's, that's way out there. This, this is now a shrinking timetable where we're mm -hmm. down to very near future. I mean, look at what's happened. Hong Kong, basically, it's over. He has completely violated the treaty to respect Hong Kong's rights and freedoms. There are none. It's become part of China. He's busy mulching it into what they call the Greater Bay Area. And on Taiwan, as we see this weak White House, where President Biden, you know, the readout from the White House when President Biden spoke with uh, Xi Jinping last week was sort of, you know, they discussed important matters. What China said is that Xi Jinping threatened him. Those who play with fire will perish by it. Yes. The precise yeah. words, by the way, with which they threatened Hong Kong. And what mm. President Biden should have said is right back at you. You know, yeah. you, you're, you're the one playing with fire. But what he needs to do that is a much stronger military, not woke and eco-fueled, but ready to deter and win wars, and a stronger economy. You can't bankrupt right. America. Right. No, it, it, and, we're, uh, and, and she understands that we're, we, as vulnerable as he is because of the pandemic, et cetera, uh, we are extremely vulnerable because of this particular administration, and, and he's trying to yeah. take advantage of that as quickly as he can. Claudia Rosette, good to see you, my friend. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We'll be right back. Stay with us.